Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, meet Praneet. In today's video, we are going to discuss some important tips and checklists that the people who are coming to United States on F1 visa should remember. So please watch the video till the very end and uh, let's jump into the video right away. Let's start with the documents. So what are the three documents that you need to carry when you're traveling to United States on F1 visa? The first is I-20 and that is provided to you by the university that you are admitted into. The second is university admission letter. And the third is the passport, your, your passport with the F1 visa stamp. And these documents you should always have when you're traveling to the United States for the very first time, because these would be asked by the CBP, which is Customs and Border Patrol officer at your port of entry. Now let's see what are the, some, of some of the problems that one can face when you have not checked if your passport has your name correctly spelled out. So this happened with me that my first name and the last name in my passport was all written in the given name section. And when I went for my visa interview or the US visa, what happened is when I got my US visa back from the, from the embassy, my whole name was written in the last name and my first name was designated as FNU, which stands for first name unknown. And if that is the case with you, you do not have to worry. If, when you're entering United States, they, no one would ask you that why you have FNU because they understand that if your surname was empty in your passport, this is how the US visa would be given to you. But there are definitely ways to correct this and get your name split it. And I would explain this in the next videos. However, if you have not got your F1 visa still, and you have seen that this is there is a problem with your passport, please go ahead and correct it right away. So get your name splitted. For example, have your first name and last name separated so that when you go for your US visa appointment or your visa stamp would be made or given to you, it would have the name correctly laid out. When you're coming for the very first time to United States, do carry some cash in US dollars or you can bring that in a Forex card. Now, why it is important is, let's say if you're coming on a direct flight or let's say if you have a layover and you want to have a coffee, you want to have some snacks or when you first, first arrive in the United States, you might want to take a taxi or just get some essential uh, things for yourself. So for that, do carry some US ca uh, dollars in cash, but do not carry more than $10,000 in cash. I would advise to carry around $1,000 just in case if you have anything you want to buy or any emergencies that you might face that could help, that could be uh, sorted out with the cash you have brought. Or you can, as I said, you can also bring this cash in form of Forex card, which you can swipe or at the major stores in the United States and also can transact some cash or debit some cash out from the ATM centers. One other important tip that I want to give you is, if possible, try to get an international calling card before you uh, board the plane to the United States. And I think I have seen this in, in India. When, you, when I was boarding the plane from Delhi, there were different centers, I think from Airtel or Vodafone, which were offering uh, international calling cards. And why these can be important is because once you uh, fly out of India and you reach the United States, your current number that you have in your country or home country would not work. So if, it, if you can get those calling cards, I think they cost some money, but they're, they're very helpful because once you land in the United States, you'll have those, you can use those cards to call back home and let your parents know that you have landed safely or let your uh, relatives know that you have landed safely, safely and also use that card to contact your university or your friends so that they can help you with some of the processes that, they, that you want. So uh, having an international calling card could be a very helpful thing if, you, if you're traveling for the first time. Definitely you can get uh, air, Wi-Fi on the airports, especially in US, all airports have Wi-Fi. But just in case, sometimes let's say if your Wi-Fi is not working, the Wi-Fi is not working, or if your phone doesn't have the capabilities of video call, you can always use the uh, international calling cards to make a phone call. Now, once you have boarded the flight to United States, and uh, once you land in the United States, the first place that you land here in the United States would be your port of entry. At port of entry, you will have to go through immigration. 
Now, once you get out of your plane, you'll you'll have to you'll be guided through the uh, through the lanes, and you'll be guided to the place where the immigration is happening. And be aware that sometimes it can take hours for immigration. If you let's say if there are multiple fly flights coming at the same time, it could take a lot of time. So make sure if you have a connection uh, from that particular place you have landed from or landed in, then make sure that you have enough time to to clear immigration and then get your bags, recheck your bags, and do the other process, which I'll explain shortly. So once you once you land, you have to go through immigration. And in immigration, what happens is you will meet in CBP officer, which is which is also known as Customs and Border Patrol Patrol officer. And what they will do is they'll ask you all the documents like passport, I twenty, admission letter, and then they will ask you to give your fingerprints of all the ten fingers and uh, uh, so eight fingers and two thumbs, and uh, also your photograph. And they will also they might also ask you questions like which university you are coming. Uh, to study for, uh, what is the course you will be studying, and what is your plan after completing your course. So be prepared with those answers. And uh, they might also ask what exactly you are carrying in your bags. So, for example, they are looking for that you're not carrying any seeds, any fruits, uh, any spices. So please, please do not bring those because you can get all of those things once you are here in the United States. So avoid carrying those because uh, if they found out that you have all these things, you might go have to go for a secondary check uh, of the baggage, which, which could take a lot of time. So avoid taking bringing all those items uh, with you. And uh, also be prepared about the questions that the immigration officer might ask you. After you have completed your immigration, you will be directed towards the baggage area where you can collect your bags. Now, if you, if, if let's say the, the place that you first landed in the United States is your final destination, then you can take your bags and exit the airport. However, let's say if you have a connection from that airport, then you'll have to take your bags and recheck them. So make sure you have enough time, as I said previously. So you have to go to the counter of the uh, airlines you're flying with and recheck your bags. And once you have rechecked your bags, you'll have to take a train or let's say a bus, whatever the transportation is, or maybe sometimes you can just walk to the next terminal from where your next flight is. And once you have, uh, once you're going to the next terminal, you'll have to go through the security check again. And in United States, uh, in security check, uh, there are different things that you have to make sure you comply with. So you have to take your shoes off, you have to take your jackets off, uh, you should not have anything in your pockets, whether it's phone, whether it's your wallet, uh, even any receipts. So make sure you have your pockets empty. You should not have your belt on. And uh, uh, I think even I think sometimes they ask you to take your watches off. So make sure all your pockets are empty. In some airports, they might ask you to take out your laptop and keep it in a different tray along with your phone, wallet, and other essentials. So, and while going through the security, uh, make sure you, once you have cleared the security, collect everything take your time, put everything back in, take your watch, take your wallet, do not forget your uh, stuff. And do not uh, do not take out your passport or other important documents and keep on the tray. Once you have shown it to the officer, you can just put it back into your bag and uh, just have it go through the security. I hope uh, that would help you go through the security uh, without any problems. And uh, once you have cleared security, then you can go to your uh, gates where you have the next flight from and then board the flight and uh, reach your final destination. Once you have reached your final destination, most of the times the university sends a cab or uh, some kind of service, taxi service, which will help you uh, take you from the airport to the, the destination that you want to go to. That could be an apartment that you have booked or a friend's place or maybe a campus apartment that you're going to. So I wish you all the very best. Uh, I know you're starting a journey far, far away from your home. So I hope you, you have no problems uh, coming to the United States. And please feel free to let me know in the comments if you have any questions, if you want to know more about this process, like what questions you can expect by the CBP officer and uh, like in general, any questions that you have. So feel free to let me know in the comments and also let me know if you have any other topics that you want me to cover uh, regarding F1 visa. So I, again, I wish you all the very best. You have a safe flight if you're traveling to the United States soon and uh, yeah, and have an amazing, amazing career and study at, in the United States. So I'll see you in the next video very soon.